next slide. This slide is about how weight is different from mass. Mass is the amount of matter in something, or basically the number of protons and neutrons in something. It measures the object's resistance to a change in its motion, its inertia. We use kilograms for mass in the metric system. Weight is the amount of gravity force felt by an object, so it depends on the gravity environment. We use newtons for weight in the metric system. The picture shows the stick figure Joe astronaut on several different places in the solar system. Notice that Joe's mass stays the same. The number of atoms in his body haven't changed. However, his weight is definitely different at the different locations. You can find the weight from Newton's second law, that is the gravity force Joe feels equals Joe's mass multiplied by the gravitational acceleration on the object, which is how quickly something would fall or accelerate on the object. Going to the moon is a weight loss experience that is guaranteed to work. The moon's surface gravity is just one-sixth as strong as on the Earth, so Joe's weight is just one-sixth his Earth weight. At the cloud tops of Jupiter, the gravity is 2.5 times stronger than Earth's surface gravity, so Joe's legs would have to be strong enough to hold up 2.5 times the weight. On the surface of the sun, assuming he doesn't get vaporized by the 6,000 degree surface, Joe's legs would have to be strong enough to hold up almost 28 times the weight. Good luck with that, Joe. Next slide. Gravity is an inverse square law force, which means that gravity changes as 1 over distance squared. Don't forget to square the distance effect. The animation cycles through different inverse square laws examples. As distance gets bigger, gravity gets smaller in the way shown in the equation. The old gravity force, or calibration gravity force, is set to 100 in these examples. The old distance, or calibration distance, is set to 1. Compared to the calibration setup, how does the gravity change with the different distances? Fill in the table as the animation cycles through the different distances. If the distance is twice as big, the gravity is 1 half times 1 half equals just one quarter the amount. If the distance is three times as big, the gravity is one third times one third equals one ninth the amount, etc. Notice what happens when the distance is just half as much as the original distance. The gravity force is two times two equals four times as much. This is why black holes are dangerous in close distances, and you can get very close to a black hole. Next slide. This is probably the most important slide of the gravity set. This slide contrasts how people thought things should move, labeled Aristotle, from what Galileo found from his experiments, labeled Galileo. Isaac Newton was able to explain Galileo's experimental results using the law of gravity. The first thing Galileo found about falling objects is that objects will accelerate as they fall. That is shown in the right-hand side anvil. What surprises people is shown in the second animation. Galileo found from his experiments that how fast something falls, how much it accelerates, does not depend on the mass of the falling object. The acceleration is the same for pure gravity in the absence of air friction. The small light ball and big hit massive anvil will hit the ground at the same time if dropped from the same height. Newton found from his law of gravity that the acceleration of an object in a gravity field is equal to the gravity constant, big G, times mass, big M, divided by the distance to the center squared. The big M mass is the mass of the planet. For things orbiting a star, the big M mass is the mass of the star. Notice that the little m mass is missing. That is the mass of the falling object. The acceleration of the falling object or orbiting object does not depend on its own mass. That is why the Kepler's third law table is for anything orbiting the sun, whether it is a big planet or an asteroid, comet, or small pebble. I have a warning here about the difference between gravity force and gravity acceleration. The gravity force definitely depends on both masses, big M and little m. When people say just gravity, they mean the force of gravity. If you want to talk about gravity acceleration, then you say gravity acceleration. That is, you have to include acceleration. The gravity force between Earth 
and the anvil is greater than the gravity force between Earth and the small ball. However, the anvil has greater inertia, that is, greater mass, so the anvil's acceleration is the same as the small ball's. In the Astronomy Notes textbook, I talk about the huge planet Jupiter and the tiny Trojan asteroids having the same acceleration because they orbit the Sun at the same distance. That same acceleration results in them having the same orbit speed and orbit period. The fact that things at the same distance from the Earth will orbit Earth with the same acceleration explains the feeling of weightlessness. The picture shows a spaceship with a person inside and a pencil. Because they are at the same distance from Earth, they will orbit in the same way. They are actually in free fall toward the Earth, but they have enough sideways motion that the Earth curves away from them by the same amount that they fall toward the Earth's center. The result is they are in constant free fall as they orbit the Earth, and they feel weightless. The next graphic illustrates what determines or affects the orbit speed and orbit period the distance between the central object and the orbiting object, and the mass of the central object. The mass of the orbiting object does not matter if the orbiting object is much less massive than the central object. Now, if the two objects have comparable masses, then each of them would have noticeable orbits around a common point called the center of mass. A few slides ago, I talked about exoplanets using the wobble of the star, which is the star orbiting the center of mass, but that takes some really sensitive instruments to measure the small wobble of the star. At the bottom of the slide is a note about measuring the mass of the central object. Recall that the acceleration of an object in a gravity field is equal to the gravity constant, big G, times mass, big M, divided by the distance to the center square. The big M mass is the mass of the central object. Using some basic algebra, you find that the mass of the central object equals the gravitational acceleration times the distance squared divided by the gravity constant, big G. That means if you measure the gravitational acceleration and the distance between the two objects, you can derive the mass of the central object. For things falling on the Earth, that'd be the mass of the Earth, which turns out to be 6 times 10 to the 21st power metric tons.